well as the weekend. As you know, it gets all chaotic in pro wrestling. But however, I'm going to try to do the best I possible. We're going to be reviewing, of course, from Got to Move, the Masahiro Takanashi show that took place last month in September, even though we're in October. This is, as you know, Got to Move normally does their shows, and they wait a while until they actually edit everything else and then upload it. So we'll be doing that as well. And then, as you know, their flag show, Choco Pro, had their latest show with 335 featuring two matches, which is very fun to watch. And, of course, we have AEW Collision with the main event being the TNT title. Will Brian Danielson finally defeat Christian Cage to obtain the title? Or, once again, the arrogant fool of Christian Cage will remain as the champion? Well, we'll see what happens until then. However, some interesting developments. There won't be no news updates for this particular episode. So, where are episode, an update free from this one for now? Until possibly the next one. So, let's get ready for another episode of the Vita Wrestle Zone. Welcome everybody to the Lead It Wrestle Zone. All things that is pro wrestling with AEW, NXT, New Japan Pro Wrestling, Impact Wrestling, the National Wrestling Alliance, various promotions, wrestlers, matches, and championships. I am your host, J Rod here. So, if you are new to the channel, welcome. This is a channel where we review a lot of uh, pro wrestling shows from various parts in the world, not only here in the United States. But also in Japan, Mexico, Canada, Europe, Can Europe, uh, the UK, anywhere in the world where wrestling is not as big, but it is growing. We also do some discussion videos, news updates, everything else that are fun to everyone to enjoy. The things about pro wrestling, what's been going on in the world, and of course, if you like to hear. But of course, if you like this episode, if you like what you see, please subscribe to us or click on the subscribe button. Or if you like this episode, please give us a like on the like button or a nice comment down below. So, let's begin with our very first review. This is from the Got to Move brand. Uh, we have the Masahiro Takanashi show that took place back last month on, October, on September 19th. Now, Masahiro Takanashi celebrated 20 years of professional wrestling since he debuted. Uh, they had an interesting um, pre-show. We have Kappa Kozo. Well, not the Kappa Kozo. Um, it's actually Hoshi Tango wearing the mask because I recognize his body type. So he was wearing the Kaza Ko Kappa Kozo mask. He teams up with Momonoff, um, very popular wrestler in, in the promo in the setup promotion. He they face against um, Yusa Urano and of course um, Dr. Gore. So, very interesting match. I wasn't too sure how this was going to go. But, in the end, it was Uzana um, who, picked, who picked up the win on to Momonov. And, just like that, of course. But, Kapakozo turned his back on Momonov for not picking up the win. So, that really pisses off his boss, of course, uh, Yuna. But, yeah. Our next match is a tag team gauntlet match. Now, I completely lost track of everybody. I can tell you the T Damnation TA was involved. Uh, Shin Dragon was involved. Uh, a few others. But the winners of this match is the founder of Freedom Sazaki and Balinaki. Very interesting duo. I didn't think they were going to win. But it was, of course, with their last match with... Um, Damnation TA that allowed them to pick up the win things to Balin Aki since he got him tossed outside of the ring. Next up, as you know, the continuation of the Saki Akai tour of her final finale. She faces against DJ Nira. Now, those who don't know who Nira is, he's this weird wrestler that he just minds his own business and all this other stuff. 
but however he was using unorthodox methods in order to try to pick up a win. At some point of the match the referee was knocked out but here comes some people out of nowhere that tried to get involved in somehow but in result of this match it ended with a no contest so nobody wins. Next up we have an interesting six man tag match we have Monetsuka Nakamura teaming up with Daiki Shim um Shimamura, Shimamura, and Yukio, uh, no, and Mao. They take on um, uh, Isama Kodaka, uh, who else? Oh, yeah, Ken Oka, and of course, Yukio Sekiguchi. Uh, I don't know why this combination w happened, but it was very interesting. I forgot what Balanaki said, but it had something to do with uh, something that happened in the past with these guys. But in the end of this one, it was a jumping knee strike by none other than. Yukio, uh, Yukio Sakiguchi onto uh, uh, on Nakamura to pick up the win. Now our next match is a bit of a CDK showdown. Masahiro Takanashi um, taking on Chris Brooks. This match was amazing. So brutalized. You probably would have thought that this match would have been in favor of Masahiro Takanashi since this is his anniversary show but no it was um chris brooks with some sort of underhook uh slam or whatever it was that allowed him to win the match however the match ended with of course it restarted masa being in a ring with a guy named kudos someone from his past but however kudos picked up the win when he also did a when he did a double knee drop onto onto masa to pick up the win so uh, don't know much about who this guy is but um, yeah, so I think that's pretty much it right now with, um, this would got to move. So let's move on with their flag show, Choco Pro. Okay, Choco Pro 335. Two matches only. Our first, as you know, we opened up with Balanaki doing his thing, opening up the show, giving the lowdown of the ring and all of the matches, the whole thing. Our first match is tag match. We have Sayaka Obihiro teaming up with uh, Shivam, who is the top champion in setup in Thailand. They take on Masahiro Takanashi and Antonio Honda. Uh, you probably would have assumed because Honda's involved in this match, of course, there are going to be some dirty tricks from him being involved of course he was going to do that but however in this particular match it was honda who picked up the win um, against obi just like that a very disappointing loss for obi but she did put up a good effort now interesting our next and final match was an interesting one a six person tag match team number one Mia tsuba teams up with the best bros yes the best bros keep in mind may shruga is her teacher so that's the reason she's in it. I have to say it was very interesting that she teamed up. However, they face a very fierce team. Of course, Chiko Shikawa and Hagene Shino, better known as Ektars, but they team up with the veteran Kaiori Yonayama. Recently, there's been some, how do I say, not animosity, but more like, okay, a bit of a feud between both Yonayama and Meishu because of their high speed capability. That's the reason. Uh, but during the when the bell did not ring just yet, uh, when the be uh, bell ring, uh, Kore Yama, y Yonayama, Chi, and Hagane attacked their opposition, and it went into that. I mean, it was a fantastic match, not gonna lie. I mean, Mia really showed that she had the fighting spirit, that she was willing, determined to pick up a win again. But unfortunately, it did not do any good because she got pinned by Chiko Shikawa, and it kind of disappointing. However, she continues to try to get in her in chief's face but it was honda who picked up who was the referee decided to play the law by using the bell to get them straight in line just like that <laughs> so i thought it was really fun now for on junkin tournament i didn't know who was going to win um balanaki seems like he was going to win but nope it did not but in the end of this junkin tournament it was none other than antonio honda so yeah so antonio honda is the winner for the junkin tournament now, we will have another Choco Pro Rules soon, uh, 336. I will do that in the next episode. But right now, let's move on with AEW Collision. Well, 
All right, AEW Collision. It opened up with Adam Copeland, who was about to do a promo and try to find out more about what he had to say about Christian Cage about his recent behavior. Christian shows up with some security guards in order, thinking that they were there to protect not, uh, Edge uh, from Christian and all that. But of course, he's just too much of a coward because he is afraid of Christian. But however, Brian Danielson shows up, you know, tells him that he will beat him for the title. However, someone else had something to say, and that is the one person that, of course, lost to Brian Danielson. And we're talking about Ricky Starks along with Big Bill. And then here comes, of course, FTR had something to say. However, Christian Cage was telling them that, of course, BCC were strictly forbidden from being in ringside. However, Brian Cage also did the same thing. I mean, uh, Brian Danielson also did the same thing while telling Tony Khan that Luchasaurus and Nick Wayne are banned. So basically, he had no one. But of course, Christian K tried to save his own skin, shoved the security guard, and security security guard got their asses handed to them. So yep, that's what happened. Now our next match, we have a championship, and this is from the ROH World Television Championship. We have Samoa Joe versus Willie Mac. I mean, Willie Mac is one of those wrestlers we have seen who's been been there, done that. He has done it all. But he does show a bit of a, of a good fight against Samoa Joe. But unfortunately, it did not do any well because um, it was the muscle buster that sealed the deal for Joe onto Willie Mack to retain the title. Now, during an interview with Lexi Neer, uh, she interviewed CJ Perry. P apparently, uh, Perry decided to, she's going to manage the next person to see if they can reach for the top and the person who answered that was none other than action and dreddy who we all know has been a, on a roll not only in the, in the tag team division but also uh his impressive win record of course with defeating jericho is also in the top of discussion of that however later on they did show Miro, who was not happy with how things assumed so he'll be fa he'll be dealing with action and dreddy however later was revealed that he will be facing him real soon Next up, we got Juice Robinson taking on Christopher Daniels. You know this is going to be an interesting match. However, with this match, it would literally be a strong message to MJF. However, it was Juice with the Juices Loose, which is the third DDT that allowed him to pick up the win. However, in the post-match, Juice Robinson, as you know, tells him that he will t win the, the diamond ring regardless to take everything away from MJF. But we'll see what happens until then. Now, our next match, we have Kyle Fletcher taking on Boulder. You probably would have thought this was going to be a very interesting match. Boulder, he's a much bigger individual, much buffer. However, you have Kyle Fletcher, who, as you know, Mark Davis injured his wrist. He's going to do fly solo. He was very impressive as a, sol uh, as a singles wrestler. I mean, we normally know him as a tag team specialist, but he picked up the win when he applied the Dragon Sleeper onto um, onto. Boulder, what a great moment right there. Now, during an interview, the acclaim were in talk saying that they are 48 days since becoming the AEW World Trios champion. However, uh, the matter is MJF. Max is determined to say that he wants to be his tag partner to take on the Bullet Club Gold, but we'll see what happens from here on out. Our next match we have Sky Blue versus um, Chris Statlander. I thought this match was good. I mean, Chris, uh, we have seen how dominant Chris Statlander has become. Sky Blue, a rising star, and I think this is where, of course, we could see a future match between those two. But it was um, Chris Statlander with the um, um, uh, Saturday Night Fever. Um, to win the match, however, um, of course, um, Sky Blue was not going to shake her hand or anything, so basically just ended just like that for them. So, yeah, moving on. Keith Lee versus Turbo Legend. However, during the uh, backside, we did see um, Lee Moriarty and uh, Shane Taylor watching, but it was a powerbomb by Keith Lee that put away uh, Turbo more uh turbo floyd now our next match is the tnt title what a brutal match i have to say between brian Nancy and 
Christian Cage. However, uh, you probably would have thought that this match would have fallen in favor of Christian Cage. It did not. However, it was this uh, Big Bill showed up and distracted the referee, giving Ricky Starks the opportunity to attack uh, Ricky Starks just like that. However, all hell broke loose when FTR and Adam Copeland showed up. Things were now going haywire, so that's what took place. Can't wait to see what's going to happen this coming week. So we'll see what happens. Until then, we'll just end it right here since there is no news update. So let's just call it a day. Well, I hope everybody enjoys this episode. Coming up, we do have another Choco Pro show. But I haven't decided what I'm going to do for the next episode. So we'll see what happens until then. Uh, the next discussion video will be coming out soon, which is involving Kairi. Uh, we'll be talking more about uh, her time since she came back to Japan. And then all the way to now, we're at the present moment. So we'll see what happens. But for now, we'll just leave it as that. And I must bid all of you adieu. So, goodbye. And have a nice day. Bang.